This is episode 50 of Alas, Nothing Important Materialized in the End, the podcast. It's our final episode for the foreseeable future, perhaps for all time. Perhaps all mediocre things must come to an end. Otherwise, they just stay mediocre. I mean, sage words of wisdom. Sure. From no one. Uh, I'm a caricature of a video game character, Grenchler. And with me is a caricature of a video game character, Wooper. I guess that's as about a that's about as good a way to describe me as anything else. Um, I've kind of lost the thread here, but you know we're here to talk about anime for the last time. Uh, even though the summer season is is right around the corner, I don't. We're not going to be continuing on. Um, as nothing good's happening. <laughs> there's there's some promising looking shows you know there there are a handful every season but i think we had the misfortune of picking some for like the past three months that looked kind of good but ended up kind of being shitty i mean even carol and tuesday which we are still like hanging on to is They're like please pretty, please want an abe san do something <laughs> i don't know what his uh level of involvement is i mean he's he's the director got his name on it how he's well his name was on other things that he's done like space dandy where i mean that wasn't even exactly david fincher directed alien 3 and that was a pile of dog crap yeah well i guess everybody gets one <laughs> although he already had zonky no terror so yeah sorry to everybody listening who thought that show was good but it it wasn't it was a clusterfuck i don't think i remember it well enough to say it was a clusterfuck i just remember people <laughs> just telling watch, me it just was watch bad. the last episode i mean there's Tons of. I mean, I remember the ending was shit, but I thought the rest of it was like, okay. Well, you know, maybe it was. I who who knows? It's been forever since I watched it because I saw it as it was airing because I was so hyped. Um, you know, and perhaps my expectations were just too high, but whatever. That's not what we're here to discuss. We're here to discuss his more recent work, Carol and Tuesday, episode eleven. Right. Even though episode twelve has aired by the time you're listening to yeah, this. Yeah, it's already out. Yeah, yeah. I already subbed it. I I just torrented it. Uh. Um Yeah, so we'll do that and then some some Demon Slayers, some Kimitsu no Yaivas, some, some And then we will finish Shonen literally Shonen jumping all over the place in these episodes because yep. the room keeps spinning. We will go from Wantanebe's newest work to one of his oldest. One of, if not his oldest. Yeah. Might have been the first work where he was like a chief director. Um, yeah. And that, that show I thought was, was all right. That's some, I have some things to say about it, but not as many as I would have predicted. Right. Anyways, what are we starting with? Artigan. Or Pitbull, depending on your eyes. Right. Or lack uh, thereof. So you're talking about Carolyn Tuesday. Yes. Um... Why do, why can't Sibel just die? I don't know because they have to put in some sort of some sort of drama or barrier for Carol and Tuesday. They have to be like, "Wow, look how flexible we are as an artist even though we literally don't have a choice at this point." I don't know. I just I, hate Sibel so much. This, it's it was a shitty character that had a shitty resolution, which we assume at this point is a resolution because she's basically been arrested for assaulting someone. Like, yeah. I, I just, her, her character is like so bad. Why, why not just have the, the drama of them being on this show be, be the sufficient. drama? Yeah, yeah. Like they're, they're, trying to because they're the main characters so it's not dramatic enough by itself because it's always like oh well they're gonna win anyways you know it's it's almost the the shonen effect you're not worried for the main hero because you know that the main hero is gonna win well that's just the fiction effect the main character is have you not, read george rr R. martin's novels <laughs> uh, i read the first one they tend to die a lot i read the first one and it was a slog dude all of Brand's chapters just made me want to kill myself. I mean, they were so dry. All of Brand's dialogue in season eight made me want to kill myself, but I still watched it. I can't remember a thing about season eight, but that's Game of Thrones. Why do you think I traveled all the way here? 
Uh, that's that's, <laughs> da, 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 that's da, da, Game da, of da. Thrones, and we're talking about Carol and Tuesday. So, Cybelle's character, man, I it's been like literally a week since I watched this, so I don't have a perfect recollection of like the the thoughts that I had about this episode, like what they could have done differently about this whole Mars Brightest arc. Because I was discussing this with somebody else, and I like I mapped out um, this the whole like a whole route that the show could have taken instead of Cybell, um, you know. They could have made the whatever. performances more interesting. Like something as simple as you know, since it's a show based on music, say they're playing something and Tuesday breaks a string or something, and they eh. have to improvise the second half of the performance. Make it seem more natural rather than like, yo, we took our two singers, sat them in a studio, and had someone play the same eight notes over and over. And look, they won the contest. Well, they haven't they haven't won yet. Well, I mean, they got into the finals, and that's good enough. I guess. I mean, people on American Idol who came in second, third, eighth have gone on to have fabulous music careers. Oh, fabulous is one word for it. I mean, I would say very successful for sure. Fabulous as in successful. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, like, because that much, you know, in, in Piotr, uh, <laughs> nice pronunciation, dude. <laughs> that, I think that was like spot on. Um, even, even said, he was like, it's like, yeah, I'm sad about losing, but I gained so many new followers. Like the amount of exposure you get from being watched by lord knows how many people on a show like that it's that yeah. would jumpstart anyone's career even if it was just like hey we put out like some indie record labels people would be like oh look i recognize that name and people would you know pick it up out of interest or stream it on you twit face you know <laughs> right because we're in the year 3000 conan o'brien reference um Okay, I think I remember sort of my idea for what the show could have done differently. And it's just like remove Sibel. Because at the end of this episode, um, you know, there are the two characters, Carol and Tuesday, they're having their that whole talk about, you know, you're not assertive enough. You didn't tell this girl off. Blah, blah, blah. And then she gets kidnapped, you know, yeah. because her mother wants her brought home. Right. Um, but that in itself is dramatic enough. Why do we need the Sibel thing? Like... It, why does it really matter that her her hand gets fucked up and maybe go ahead I, like they they win anyway right so the drama becomes they've made it to the finals but oh no uh tuesday's been kidnapped so her hand getting all blistered and burned was not really relevant to the outcome of the series no it's not so why why have Sibel like be a character maybe it's supposed to the character was supposed to be a vessel for showing uh tuesday's naivete yeah i mean about, that's like how the world works that's but clearly the there case. are better ways to do it than that yeah there would be like for example um in the middle of their mars brightest run uh you know they get contacted by a record label who wants to sign them automatically but everyone is like, but it's a, like a shitty deal. Yeah. And Tuesday gets stars in her eyes and she's like, we got to do this, blah, blah, blah. Because she really wants to, um, and she ends know, up signing like success, an appearance she deal. She wants to be successful so that she doesn't have to go home. Right. Or she feels unwanted. You know, you, you could go in a different direction than this, this character. Like, and the other thing that bugs me about the Sibel plot line is the, the show kind of tried to make a whodunit out of it. It was obviously Sibel. She's a crazy stalker girl. Yeah, who Tuesday it, is inexplicably upset like when she stops texting her. Oh no, I haven't received a message from her in in a, in 24 hours. Yeah, that, <sighs> like she like gave you a hickey in public. No, 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 no not that. Will. She just bit you. That's it's a little different. I mean, I guess. But still weird. I mean, one involves both, the other. Both are weird. I don't, I just don't understand. I mean, like, do you remember uh, last week when um, there was that shot as Angela was going into the shower of her assistant, like looking at her phone as though she was going to mess with it or 
or something. Yeah. I mean, her assistant Nothing is became obviously, of that. like, obsessed with her. I mean, in this episode, she was sniffing her makeup. Like... Oh, did that happen? Yeah. Okay, I forgot about her that. Her assistant's, <laughs> like, literally obsessed with her. Yeah. Okay, well, I guess that'll... That, I to guess the that'll point of near later. delusion. Yeah. But, and she definitely gets really upset when Angela assumes that it was her. Yeah. Um, who... Angela assumes it's, his, uh, assumes it's her mom. Shit, it's not my mom. Assumes it's her assistant. <laughs> Shit, it's not my assistant. <laughs> who could it possibly be? Who could it have Maybe been? it's the character who's been chewing up screen time and my patience for the last however many episodes. I think it's been like four. Her song was cool, though. So yeah, like, I mean, you know. it was it was all right. It was okay. Um, Carol and Tuesday's song in this episode was horrid, though. I hated it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, the, the pianist playing the same, like, eight fucking notes the whole time. I honestly think that did the same progression the entire song. Well, yeah. It might have sounded more interesting if they had the guitar, which they didn't. But they still won, with, even with the handicap. Despite, you know, and they did one of those performances no. where it's just like, we, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> isn't that what they did last time too? Uh, you know, I don't remember it. Didn't, I, it stand, I think it stood did. out so little. I don't remember. I remember Piotr's performance. Well, both and, of his were pretty similar as well. And uh, GGK's performances. I remember the old metal dudes because rock on. Um, I forget. Everything I remember. Them. I definitely remember the Mermaid Sisters. The Mermaid Sisters, because that's a meme now. Mostly, I just want uh, Skip and Crystal back from the festival episode. They were dope. Yeah, that was good shit. Anyway, Tuesday gets kidnapped, <sighs> and you know, maximum drama. Oh yeah, and because will ensue. The stakes have risen to actually having stakes at this point. Now they can open a restaurant. Yeah, but. And They're, call it Steaks and Music. It's a steakhouse that plays music. Okay, let's talk <laughs> about Kimetsu no Yaiba. Yes. So, Episodes 11 and 12, we're caught up now. We're in the... And I'm wondering why. Why I bothered. We're in the, we're in the three episode fight arc. We already um, had one of those, now we're in a new one. Yeah, I know. We are. It's... Uh, They're just stuck in that house. Like episode 11, you know, the is the cliffhanger, quote unquote cliffhanger in 10 was, you know, Tanjiro stumbles across, what Zenitsu. is his name? Z yeah, Zenitsu, uh, begging some girl to marry him, you know. She ends up being just a, a passerby. Right, who is just like, are you okay? Yeah. And are you okay? <laughs> and, so, and so he assumes that, you know, she wants to get married to him or or he he should, he should, be able to marry her or something. And so that's and nine, that's really nine funny. minutes of slapstick comedy later slapstick because I'm slapping my face with a stick to try <laughs> to stay awake. Yeah, it really was like, that's, that's the thing about Zenitsu was his characters like really, you know, kind of, kind of grating. I, w I wouldn't say really necessarily because I did not get that annoyed with him. Um, rather I was bored I was yeah. like, this is this guy's not interesting at all. Mm -mm. I'm just Except for once. No, even even that. I mean, we can talk about really? that. It was the most impressive looking moment of the show so far, I think. Um you know, the You whole, mean in this episode, no, right? Of the entire show so far. Are you kidding? The perspective change from yeah, like the okay, camera yeah, swiveling that around was, that behind was him and him doing the yeah, yeah the lightning strike. Because that was all traditional as well. That wasn't no. like well. No. There was the, the there background was, was entirely easy. Okay, well, I meant the character was all traditional. Yeah, yeah, I've been noticing the CG character models in like long shots a lot more. They're really, I, they're I really bother. I me. still don't. I still don't mind them too much because I understand it's a cost saving measure, um, and it's not as offensive as it could be. I've noticed in I, still. Yeah, that's true. I've noticed in still shots when they're CG, so that they just don't have to draw the character at all. They just plop them in there and Bob's your uncle. You got yourself a still shot. I love stills. That's why I watch anime, which is animated. Love, love those still shots. Yep. Uh, what was I saying? I was complaining about something. I always am. Uh, yeah, that's, that does seem to be a trend. Oh no. What I was talking about. <laughs> the uh, 50 week trend. 
um, what I was talking about was the uh, yeah the scene at the at the very at the very end when he does the lightning strike. But dude, like, why no, no, just no. It is not like that surprising and that like wow who could have possibly predicted that a character who acts a certain way and who's who has like one personality trait that dominates their presence who could have predicted that the show would like do flip the script and all of a sudden you know they display and a personality trait that's entirely opposite my theory though is it's not him doing it there's like a spirit that lives inside of him or that's controlling him after seeing how he was written like how ugly his character is in terms of like all of his delivery and personality and all the scenes that he's involved in. You really think that there's something deeper to what's going on? Yeah, I do. Okay. Well, I definitely don't. He's just asleep. Like, you know, his, his mentor, you know, whatever. Cause so is, is, had, that, is, is he Sakura? What? Remember, um, in the tuning exams, no, I don't uh, Eno puts her to sleep and tries to control Sakura's mind. Uh, but Sakura yes. has that like inner voice, essentially, yeah. that like boots her out. So there's like a split personality that lives up in his head. I think it's actually like a spirit or something that's controlling him. Dude, I seriously doubt it. I think it's just going to be because like- when he fell asleep, it looked like he got flicked in the forehead and it like knocked him out. And when he finished well, who the, him in the forehead? when he when he finished the attack when he finished the attack and closed his sword something it looked like there was an impact like something flicked him in the forehead and he woke you back just up you just flicked your own forehead that looked kind of painful no it didn't hurt <laughs> um it, it looked like like a spirit or something was knocking him out taking control of him doing something and then waking him back up uh. Okay, well, so I think there's something. I mean, that's not out of the question, but right. I kind of just first of all, I'm not interested because his character is, you know, grating and annoying. Yeah, just dull, like 95 percent of the time. And yeah. a lot of people think that like loudness equals funny. Well, yeah, some people think that, but a lot of people think that loudness equals like interest. Like if if a character is loud, at the very least, they're not going to bore you. Is but that that's, why metal is so loud? <laughs> They, they're trying to make it interesting. <laughs> I remember that SpongeBob quote. Maybe if we play really loud, everyone will think we're good. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, I just I'm getting that vibe from his character. Like, if he's if he's so one note ninety five percent of the time, then I'm not interested in whatever spirit may be possessing him. But really, I think it's just a situation where his his mentor. Like, you know, because Tanjiro had Urukudaki, so all of these demon slayers probably had their own trainers, you know. And he this met, being a shonen, like, the the world of the show will will open up and become larger and larger as time goes on, and they have to introduce, like, new plots and stuff. So there's probably... He mentioned that he was, like, sold to someone because he was in so much debt, and that person, like, forced him to train and to become a demon slayer to pay off his debts. He, he mentions that? Yes. Was that one of the things that he mentioned during one of his crying and complaining spiels? Yes. I paid okay. attention. Nice. All right. Well, good. Because my eyes were definitely a drooping during most of the scenes where he was on screen. It's, um, I don't know. Like, they, think about the end of the episode of, because in, in these two episodes, all that we really accomplish in episode 11 is they, he, Tanjiro meets Lightning Boy and they both go to this house. And they walk into the house, and it's a spooky haunted house, and there's a dude with a boar mask. Yeah, and we we also see the demon with yeah. the uh, the taiko drums, or whatever they're called. It's not it's not taiko. Um, <laughs> I can't remember the name. Fisher Price. <laughs> yeah, they're like growing out of him. It's kind of cool. I mean, the concept of the power is cool. It's like a Donkey Kong jungle beat for the GameCube. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Uh, dun, 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 dun. Ah! Um, it's it's a neat idea. So they they meet the demon, and you know, so episode eleven is like, oh, yawn. It took forever for you to just get into this house and like walk around and meet a couple characters. So then episode twelve, like, okay, let's let's do it. Let's get this fight going. But no, there's so much time spent. Uh, Tan Tanjiro talking to people like. Are you okay? You've done a great job being so brave up until this point. Let me treat your wound. Like, get 
get your fucking sword out of its sheath and cut some stuff up, dude. Like you don't have to be this this bastion of compassion for these kids. You know what would would really help their situation if you killed the demon in the house that probably like wants to suck their blood. I mean, wants to. We know they do because they have like type O blood. No, it's it's uh, it's Tanjiro who has the special blood. They go into detail about. No, it's not Tanjiro. It's one of the. It's the the brother. I don't. I don't think so. I think it's. I think no, it's, it's Tanjiro who it's has the, the special brother. blood. No, oh, because aren't they going into detail about how like the blood makes you more powerful and stuff? Like some no, people have no, special no, no. It blood. just makes it just makes you more tasty to a demon. It's like for a demon, it's the equivalent of eating like fifty or a hundred people. Right, I, I got just that. Like it's being, like a feast. it's like being typo negative. Yeah, it's you know some people have really rare blood, and it's some word that starts with M that I didn't bother to write <laughs> down. <laughs> Something that sounds like that when a demon says it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and if uh, Zenitsu were to say it, it would be. <laughs> I just did the Naruto music for whenever a joke happens. <laughs> oh God. Uh, like the, the, do you remember the end of episode 12? You know, he's, there's a bunch of really cool looking scenes where, you know, the, the room's shifting around and yeah. he's jumping from place to place. And, um, then he starts to think to himself about how, like, he's, he's endured all this pain and suffering because he's the oldest son. Yeah. It's like, I'm not, I wouldn't be able to do this if I was the second son. Why not just get out of the character's head and show us what is going on in the real world? Like, show us a fight between... I, and I, I don't want to come off as one of these people who's like, I need action. I need my action anime to be like, I need to see the swords and the guns. It, I, just, I just want there to be some sense of like real world, I don't know, tempo to what's or, going on. Or some sense of urgency. You're in a fight with someone. You're not, you know... You're, you're, not, not, you're play, not writing a diary you're not, entry. You're not playing Sudoku. Yeah, then he's like, water changes shape. I can just change this shape. My ribs are broken. I'm okay. <laughs> Believe because, in yourself. Because, Believe it! Because he's the oldest son. <laughs> That's why he's all right. I mean, I don't know, dude. I'm just not really into this. The boar guy was there, and he just fights anything that moves. That's That's about, that's about it. I like his voice actor. You get a real sense of him being like kind of unhinged. Yeah, or kind his, of feral. His, yeah, from his performance. Um, you know, the, the way he talks to Tanjiro versus the way that he talks to, I don't even know if he talks to any other characters, but if he did, wait, <laughs> this doesn't really work as hypothetical, but like <laughs> the, way, <laughs> the way that he talks to Tanjiro, like the tone of voice he assumes with him is the same way that he probably speaks to like uh, you know, like a really terrible villain or some random passerby on the street. Like you, you get the sense that he's like always in this mode. Yeah. He probably doesn't have a secret hidden side to him, like a drunken fist fighter where he, you know, gets flicked in the forehead or whatever you were describing and yeah. gets possessed by something. You know, he, this is just who he is. You get a stronger sense of who he is as a character. Um, and he tries to fight, and then he disappears, and then he keeps trying to fight. So he's staying on message. Right. Consistency. Yep. And he seems to be good at it, and he... He has some swords. He has Demon Slayer swords. Two of them. Yeah. I um, mean, Tanjiro picks him out as a Demon Slayer right away. But he's not wearing the jacket. And he attacked another Demon Slayer. Yeah. So well, he's just crazy. Did he get them from someone else? I don't know. You'll never find out. I won't unless someone reminds me to no, watch I'm, it. I'm going to keep watching at least for a little while longer. I mean, I can see myself dropping this with no like obligation to talk about it week to week. Um, but as of now, I'm going to I'm going to keep going. Like once the new season starts and I start watching like uh uh Oh Maidens in Your Savage Season, Doctor Stone, Fire Force, Kanata no Astra, etc. Uh, this one will likely fall by the wayside, but for now I'm planning to keep up with it, but mainly because like there's another guy who writes for the blog who is really into it. Uh, and I, you know, when it gets time, when it gets to the end of the year and we're doing the awards, like the, the yearly summary, right? Uh, 
I need to be able to push back against this guy advocating for Demon Slayer. So I'm doing what I what I always recommend people not do and watching something like just to finish it so I can say I finished it and you know, say I decry it its and existence. And be like, well, um, you're wrong and here's a, and here's a six-page paper yeah. as to why. Here's uh, 13 reasons why. Oof. <laughs> oh my god all right moving and on speaking of to... fat oofs gold's death in macross plus uh yeah yeah sure fat oofs yes we're we're reddit now um we imager <laughs> yeah gold died um who else died the guy who um who the programmer yeah he like dived into the the illusionary bosom of his of his know, of his, his e-girlfriend e- e- <laughs> i was about to say his e-wife yeah. His e- yeah that too um <laughs> that, was a, that was me, a pretty senpai. funny scene uh that was a pretty funny scene <laughs> i kind of laughed when it happened <laughs> uh so how'd you feel about these two episodes you know the last two of four i mean how did I feel about them? I, yeah. I were they enjoyed, good? Were they bad? Um, I enjoyed the fourth. I'm, I was a little tired, so I was kind of snoozy during part of the third because a lot of the yeah. time was spent in boardrooms. Yeah, honestly, the third episode um, was like by far the weakest for me. Um, so I, I agree there. But uh, four was four was great. There's tons of action in four, like just not just not just transforming that, and guns being shot and. Not just that though, but there's more like it feels like the the story and its elements are kind of coming together rather than it's the, it's the climax. Yeah, yeah. Three is trying to like hold what's happening together and is trying to set up for episode four rather than seeming to be an episode of its own. Um, if that makes any sense. Well, I mean, it it does. I mean, it episode three is clearly you know dedicated to putting all the characters in their in their places, you know, because uh Myun goes back to Earth and then the two guys are going after her, or one is going after her, the other is going after the first guy. Yeah. Um, uh three did have a scene I really loved though. What was it? Um when Gold and Isamu are fighting outside the hospital and it's just the piano track behind them. I there's thought that, not like I thought that was a really weird musical cue. There's not like you know, like a like fight music or like some upbeat jazz or whatever. It's I mean, that's just a, a piano because, a, uh, and and I I think and I don't know if you're, I don't know if you can correct me on this, but I think it was playing in a minor key the whole time. Well, I I don't remember. There's no um, way I'd be able to recall something like that. I don't have that kind of brain. But it it just really set the fight seeming as if right, like it was something that wasn't supposed to happen. Like, uh, like this kind like of something went wrong. Yeah. Like this, this fight wasn't, you know, supposed, you know, supposed to be, it wasn't like, you know, ordained, like something had to go wrong between these two for this fight I to see. be happening. That's what, that's why I really like that. Right. Uh, that so the, behind it. Okay. So the music sounded kind of like discordant, like, yeah. Right. And I really like the piano as an instrument as well. Um, I think using a singular instrument as a backing track for anything is difficult. And I liked how it was used. So cool. Favorite part of three for sure. Um, all right. I, I like when, when that fight scene was going on, I, first of all, the music, I, you know, you said it wasn't like some upbeat jazz, uh, and not only did I flash to a specific fight from Cowboy Bebop when you said that, but when it was happening, like as I was watching, I thought to myself, "What? what where's the jazz? Where's the jazz music from like episode one of Bebop when he's fighting against Asimov and Spike versus Asimov? They're fighting over the red eye. Because um, in, in that, you know, Spike's like wearing the poncho and the sombrero. Yeah. Or I don't know if poncho is the right word, but. Uh, uh, yeah, there's a there's a name for that. Mexican outfit. I just, I just don't know what it is. Yeah. Um. I was just like expecting that. I don't know. I mean, that's not right of me, probably, to have that expectation. But it, it definitely felt odd. It behooved for, for you. me. What? 
It no. behooved you? No. That's not no. how you use that that's word. That's not how Okay. <laughs> I don't know. It would behoove you to look up the meaning of the word behoove. Okay. I, I'll, uh, I'll put that on my list of things to do. Uh, so I, yeah, I, I just thought it was a, an odd choice that, um, that particular music. Um, but you know, I, I'll, I'll, I respect your, your take on it. You had a, like a, a reason to, to appreciate it like specifically. Um, so yeah, that, that was, that was definitely a significant moment in episode three, um, because these two characters have been butting heads for a while now and like been like trying to kill each other it seems at some points and there's an inquiry about that yeah and we, we learn eventually that gold did not like it, it was an accident um and it was in fact it was set up by the the general who led the inquiry yeah uh, i think that's what we're supposed to infer because they want to move everything towards like uh, unmanned um you know, right. jets, so planes. They, they want proof that, you know, like you, we can't trust men to pilot these. Right. They need, they need a reason. They need a, an excuse, um, to go ahead with their, their plan to like autonomize everything. But that's, that's not, maybe that is the right use of that word. Um, but that actually kind of has a parallel in the whole Sharon thing because they want to, her, her handler or her creator, her programmer right. wants her to be, um, totally standalone, you right, know? and not rely on Young for emotional, emotional support. drive. Yeah, um, and then see in also in this future, uh, the Macross government wants uh, wants to keep people out of these fighter planes. You know, and I think it it would have been interesting if this you know if Macross Plus were like a longer series if they had gone into like the political and economic reasons for them to make that decision. You know, because it's it's probably tied up in money somehow. You know, they, they want, uh, they want to get a contract for this specific type of plane, you know, because it's going to, right. I mean, people rich very recently between the U S uh, and another nation, uh, one of our drones was shot down or damaged, yeah. um, over another country. Um, this it's, it's not exactly cheap. $123 million for one of those. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, okay. Well, I mean, if you if you think about it, you're like drone, and you think you know someone flies a little controller like that. No, this thing is the size of an F sixteen. It's massive. Wait, how does that? What does that have to do with what I was just talking about? Because um, money, governments moving towards uh, autonomy and trying to get people off the front line is yeah. But I'm I'm talking about like wanting to have have learned about whatever like corrupt motivations were behind the if if it was corrupt maybe it was a humanitarian reason well i didn't get that sense like because they no. they all the guys who are doing the the flying and the testing and the programming of these of these planes they're all you know they're the heroes right um and the the general and his goons you know all the, the guys villain. who are sitting alongside the you know the table yeah the like the the the, ex the board executives yeah they're the the suits are the bad guys yeah um, we're not given much more nuance than that. Um, but I mean, this was at, like, at the end of the day, it seems like it was meant to have been a character piece. You know, it's about Myung and, uh, and Isamu and gold. Um, but even, even that as aspect of it, I thought felt a little bit flat near the end, like Isamu and gold are shooting at each other. And then, you know, we already know that Gold has to like give over part of his consciousness to the the plane that he flies, right? In order to fly it, yeah. So it, it, I mean, it's it's understandable that he would like perhaps recall some some memories that he had previously locked away while he's flying. But he just like he just happens to remember. Oh remember. wait, no, wait. I raped her. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. yeah. Oh, oh wait, I'm the scumbag asshole. Oh, you want to get a drink after this, bro? Oh, never, never mind. I got to do Yo, a kamikaze. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I, I, I can get a drink, but we can only get kamikazes. Be right back. Uh, rest in peace, Gold. Rest in peace, my favorite green-skinned human. He, he had like gray skin. Gray skin, green skin. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad that it kind of came across as green because the Zentradi originally, I think, had green and and purple skin. If I, I mean, I when have, did the, when did the original series come out? Um, 1982. 
I want to say. And then SDF, uh, Do You Remember Love? Or Macross, Do You Remember Love? That was the movie. I actually recommend watching that. It's pretty, pretty fucking cool. Um, that was 94, I think. It was like the compilation film, the same way Gundam had like a trilogy of films. Macross had a standalone film mm. that compacted the events of the series. And uh, there's a lot of really great animation that this actually owes a lot to, this OVA. I mean, obviously they're both Macross properties, but some clear inspiration was taken from all the, like the dog fights and the, the, you remember those Sakuga videos that I linked you to? Like those guys, those nerds at the convention doing a panel. Yeah. Uh, one of the people who they talk about is um, Itano. I can't remember his. Is that the guy who does like 90 million missiles yes. and a bunch of explosions at yeah. the same time? He made his name working on Macross, I believe. Um, you know, like planes weaving through the air, dodging all the missiles and blah, blah, blah. Uh, the Itano Circus is what that technique is called. And that was, you know, that was put to good use like multiple times, especially yeah. in episode four. Yes. Uh, with, when there's like lasers, missiles. Bullet hells. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so all, the, I mean, I think my favorite part of episode four was just, you know, all the, all the scenes where the jets are flying around and trying to shoot each other and stuff. Yeah. Because as far as the character stuff goes, like it, it did disappoint a little bit. Let's hook up an AI we don't understand to the most advanced war robot anyone has ever seen. What could possibly go wrong? War robot? The giant Macross in the center. Oh. That Sharon controls. Oh, right. That's a massive mech. Yeah. Yeah, and that's... Uh, having seen Do You Remember Love, I recognize right away when they... when. Um, you know, you're supposed to recognize that shot yeah. if you're a Macross guy. When Myung goes back to Earth and you see the shot of the Macross, um, yeah. you can tell right away it's like not quote unquote part of the city. It it looks like you know some yeah. sort of ship or or Mech. machine, some yeah. kind of craft. I can recognize it. Um, but yeah, when I saw it, I was like, oh, that's like that's where we are now. I I'm like recalling this from from the film, um, because they do it is set partially on Earth. Um, like their goal is to return to Earth, as is the case in like so many sci-fi. Space operas. Yeah. Um. Yeah, the Sharon Sharon like ends up hypnotizing everybody, and yeah, tries to get uh the hacker to blow Osama's brains out. Yeah. So his helmet shattered when he pulled the trigger. What happened there? Cause he seemed unscathed later. You see like he has a red smudge on his cheek near the very end when he's looking at Myung, like in the window. Um, but earlier you didn't see that a bullet had grazed him. So I'm wondering what that was. It's uh, this, the pressure from the, from the gunpowder as it exits the muzzle, that pressure can seriously damaged stuff and so it shattered the helmet of his flight suit like but why, what happened to the bullet hmm? what happened to the bullet I don't know exited the cockpit probably just went straight out ah it looked like yeah, whatever yeah. I mean obviously he's not going to get shot he's the main character yep main character plot armor um yeah but the whole thing with Myung like you know, realizing that she loves both guys, but she she loves uh, one more than the other. Yeah, love more than the other, and you know, this has to be explained to her via sharing. Do you real, do, did did you need it explained to her? I mean, one of them, you know, you, you you'd think you wouldn't love him after that. Well, I I don't know, man. Uh, there's Stockholm syndrome. I was about, to, I was literally just about to say consider. that. I mean, that's I was a, like Stockholm syndrome's a hell of a drug. It's a real thing. Um. You know, and she she grew up with both guys, so whatever. I mean, she probably was attracted to both of them while all that was going on, and that was like part of part of her formative experience, her youth. You know, so that's not just going to fade. I mean, right but away. but 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 Gold bought him lunch thirteen times. Like it's yeah, just, that scene. I kind of appreciated how how goofy that was. Like I liked how trivial it was because I I think what it was trying to illustrate is how most arguments and disagreements and stuff that we have with other people really are kind of just trivial in the grand scheme of everything because they're they're talking about like who owes each other lunch money when they're you know trying to avoid being blown up by missiles and lasers and stuff yeah you know that's that's more of a grand scale for us but you know we take you know small maladies and 
you know, misalignments and like, you know, political positions or whatever. And we make that the are the, the reason that we hate somebody. Yeah. You know, I think it's supposed to be a commentary on that. It's supposed to make it seem kind of like absurd as to why we don't like the other guy when it's such a trivial reason. Yeah. However, there is the assault to consider. That's the thing. Like, yeah, that's it not trivial. Yeah. It was, it wasn't just, oh man, he, you know, he owes me money still or, you broke my plane. Yeah, you broke, you broke my plane. I mean, which would have been a big deal back then? I don't know. It was some kind of school project or something, and he wrecked it. Yeah. He uh, wrecked it trying to fly it, though. He didn't wreck it because he was jealous. Yeah. I mean, I understand that, but... I mean, I kind of I kind of do appreciate that aspect of the scene, what it was going for. Like, these two are actually friends, and it's just that, you know, small things have come between them. But... When you step back and think about it, there is a much bigger thing that came between them. Right. Um, so, I mean, I, I mean, the scene, all those scenes were like kick ass anyway, because they, the planes were swooping around and transforming and stuff. Yeah. It was cool. Um, although there, there were a few scenes where, I mean, I was watching it subbed and there were a few scenes where, um, you know, Isamu was like, ah! but he, his mouth wasn't open. <laughs> he was just like gritting his teeth or his lips were yeah! pursed. Yeah. And he was, he was, no, it wasn't just, Ur. it was like, ah, you know, he is as, as though his mouth were wide open. Uh, so that, that bugged me. Did you notice the, but, uh, the queen sample in one of Sharon's queen songs? Sample? No, there was a, then like a couple more bars of song would play. They're going to go. No, there is no way it was actually a sample, dude. Either it, then it was a clear homage yeah, because it I'm was sure. the exact same thing. I'm sure it was because like that, that song, uh, we will rock you. That's the name of that song. And that's like an, a stadium anthem. You know, you hear it when you watch an NFL game, for example, you'll, you'll hear it faintly in the background. Right. Um, because the it's NFL. such a crowd pleaser. And that makes sense because that's what Sharon is for, people she's like a drug she's you know people are obsessed with her right um so yeah it makes sense that a song would use that uh that technique that motif yeah. whatever you want to call it well okay so help me figure out what the what was the deal with the scene in episode three where they go to the forest like isamu wakes up you know because he's been shot um so he's in that black goop which i thought was pretty cool Right. You know, it's like another hint like at a keto. future. It's like what? Uh, keto? Keto? Keto. Not like, not Earth's version, but in the Star Wars universe. Um, if you, or excuse me, Bacta. Um, if you were like severely injured, you'd be put in a Bacta tank in the Star Wars universe. And okay. like the liquid would do a lot more healing than pretty much yeah. anything else. Yeah, I thought that was a neat concept. I'm yeah, it makes sense that they it's borrowed not, it's it from not somewhere foreign, else. It's not foreign to me, um, but yeah, I, I do I do appreciate you know like alternate methods of healing in the future rather than like oh look a futuristic hospital bed yeah. with all the same equipment we re we look like but with different screens. You yeah, know, it's, it's something completely it's, different. I nice like little bit of world building there. Yeah, world building. <laughs> Y'all got any of that world building? Y'all got any of that character development? <laughs> uh, so yeah, they he gets out of the tank, and of course they go. There's this scene where he's like, "No, you don't, uh, don't hook, unhook all your IV drips and stuff. You're gonna kill yourself." And then he's like, "Shut up! I'm a red blooded man." And <laughs> But I'm, I'm a, a toxic male. <laughs> so, and they go to the forest. Oh, so this is what I was building to. Uh, what's the deal with the bird? Remember when he sees that gigantic bird and he's like chasing after it on the motorbike? He just leaves her behind. Uh-huh. Uh, and he chases after the bird and he's staring up at it like, and like then, he's never been more pleased with anything in his entire life. What's the point? I mean, the only thing that I can figure that scene symbolism. Yeah, like he he's oh, he's in pursuit of you know like flight. Yeah, a flight. He wants to he wants to go farther than than anybody else. You know, kind of reminds me of like Hachimaki to go further from, beyond. Right, like from Planetes, you you want to go as far as you possibly can, just to yeah. push yourself to whatever heights, literally, like figuratively and literally, you you can. 
but it just seems so random. Yeah, I mean, I have to imagine. I haven't seen the original Macross series, just the compilation movie, so I have to imagine that bird made an appearance in the original. And it had thing. some impact somehow, like it was a it was a dove holding an olive branch or whatever. Yeah, I don't know. I guess symbolic on that, you know, that sort of level. Um, yeah, but much bigger and it's probably crazier. something we don't get because we haven't seen the original. Um, right. There was another issue that I had with episode three, which was uh, there was not much time between the that fight scene you were talking about earlier. Like after in the in the wake of the the fight, she confesses that she's been supplying uh, Sharon's emotions. And, um, you know, then there's like one scene in, in between that and her leaving, um, at the airport. Um, and the, which is the scene where it's just like, Hey, by the way, you guys are shut down. I'm pretty sure that's that scene. Right okay. There. Yeah. Maybe. I, I don't know. Well, I mean, there's also the scene where she's informed that they're going back to earth, but th there just wasn't much time between her, like spilling her guts and being like, you know, my, my life is a lie. I'm not. My my dreams are dead. I'm not doing what I what I always wanted to do. I'm you know I'm right. I'm a shell of my former self. Yeah, I'm a washed up Broadway actress. Yeah. So there there's not much time between that and then the goodbye scene at the airport where you know Kate and her husband and Gould Gould they all show up to you know wish her well and to say yeah. like Sayonara. Um. So I, I didn't feel as though there was enough time because she's like distraught uh, in, in one scene and then she seems to have like moved beyond it. At least, you know, she she projects that, that right. image in that scene. I would have liked for there to be like a scene where she packs, for example. You know, she's packing her suitcase and, and she, she packs sees, like a, a picture of one of them. Yeah, or I was, a this thing. is obviously super cliched because we both arrived at the same concept. But I was thinking like th there would be a picture of the three of them and she would decide not to take it with her yeah. as like to symbolize that she is leaving that behind. Yeah, you know, she's, she's moving, moving on. on. Moving on from that it. would kind of explain why her personality is so different. Um, so soon after we get the scene where she's like, you know, crying in the rain about how her 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 dream's dead and blah, blah, My blah, My dream blah, is blah. dead. Your guys' dream is alive. Yeah. LOL, you, men suck. <laughs> I didn't really... I didn't really no, I didn't get, get much either. of a uh, a vibe that that vibe from the show. A I mean, it vibe. was it was very it was like very male dominated. I think, um, even though there is like Myung does get plenty of screen time. Like the, she's conflicted between two guys, you know, right. and it's those it's the it's their conflict over the woman that like drives the story. So it definitely was not uh, men suck the animation. It was more like. Men are cool, but so are like boobies and space AI. Yeah, and uh, oh, let's uh, let's 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 build this AI with a notoriously unreliable chip. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> that guy killing himself by jumping off the bridge. Oh man, I'm gonna land on the world's largest digital titty. <laughs> oh shit, that's a skyscraper. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, I guess that's as good a place as any to end this episode and this podcast. I was going to mention One Punch Man episode 11. Okay. Uh, just real briefly. Um, yeah. So it's almost to the end and you've been keeping up with it. I haven't. Yeah. But so what's going on in the, in the show? Um, Garo's squaring off against eight class A heroes. Class S or class A? A. Who cares? Um, it's a really good looking fight. Like oh, it's. Cool. It's not even close to on par as what the first episode was, but considering what the show you has the first been, season. the first season, um, I I don't consider them even the same show at this point. I like mean, it's yeah, they're produced by different people, directed by different people, but it's pretty whatever. good looking. So he, you know, he bests the. Does he do the thing like the technique where he cuts between all of them using his water fists or um, whatever? He fights them a bunch of different ways. Um, like uses their own attacks against each other, takes pieces of them to use against other guys, um, fights some of them using that style, and then Genos comes in to fight him. And so he adapts um, a Watchdog Man style. 
to use against Geno so that he can start What is moving. Watchdog Man's style? Just like moving around really fast, right? Right, but he's using, you know, all four limbs as a form of movement rather than humans usually use two, um, which is more of a more of a full body motion. Right. Um but So what happens with Genos? Um they Is it a cliffhanger? Geno, Genos is about to kill him and then Bang comes in from off screen and kicks Garo in the face and is just like, yo, I got this. Um Bang being the number three class. Number S. three Silver Fang. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty much where it ends. And Saitama, okay. uh, basically, he's going to show up in the next episode. It's like cleaning up Disciples' Mess is the title of the next episode. And he's standing in the forest where they were. So, uh, well, I really don't understand what the deal is with Garo. Like, what, what are we meant to take away from his character? He wants to be a villain, you know. There, he, but what are, as an audience, what are we meant to, like, think about that? What, why, why take that angle you know, as a storyteller. Maybe it's supposed to be a commentary on the way that uh, media or uh, popular opinion portrays something, tells you what's right and what's wrong. You know, are the monsters actually the evil person? Yeah, but you just literally said, are the monsters actually evil? Well, I mean, they are. It's pretty cut and dried in this show that they are. But doesn't that, doesn't that make your skin just like crawl up? I mean, it's. I never, that's, that's I never said so, it was Citizen that's Kane. That's so cliched. <laughs> that's like Marvel movie level. Yeah, it it really is. Sound design still dog shit. Um, but <laughs> I mean, it's half the fight is just. <laughs> Dude, but you know that that gets all the kids hyped. They hear really loud sounds. And they're into it. They're like, oh man, I'm sucked in now. I would like to meet those kids and punch them in the face. I'd just don't, be like, yo, check that. out this season one shit, bro. <laughs> this is some good shit. I I think there are probably lots of people who really don't they feel like there's much of a difference. You know, people who are just like, I've seen 10 animes. One Punch Man is my favorite, except for Sword Art Online. Uh, they're just the the novelty of the, the people who have a Crunchyroll subscription and forget they're subscribed to it, so it just keeps billing them every month. <laughs> those people. <laughs> I mean, that's that doesn't sound uh, too inaccurate. <laughs> no, but um, I like I think I think there are a lot of like anime watchers who who you I wouldn't exactly consider fans for whom the novelty of anime like you know, action adventure fantasy type stuff. That's, that's what anime is to them. And right. just, just the fact that it is animated and features all these larger than life characters with is crazy it, designs is that, enough. Well, yeah, it, not, not just that it's enough because that kind of implies that they're, they're grading it and it needs to hit a certain threshold. And once it does, that's enough. It's more like the threshold is the fact that it's animated in the first place. Yeah. Just, just that it is, um, so colorful looking and and has all how all these crazy characters. Wow, this is a lot different than Family Guy. Yeah, kind of but, but, mm, kind kind of something like that. Yeah. Just that anime is like different, you know? Yeah. Um Well, what whatever. I mean, if people enjoy it, that is their right. And they're they're not wrong to to think that, you know. It's still cool because it it is cool, you know. Like there's yeah. a there's a character who's like the strongest ever. He defeats someone in one punch. Just that premise, you know, being carried from the first season to the second is probably enough for people to be like, oh, I remember this from the the time I watched it on Netflix the first time. Now I'm gonna watch it on Netflix the second time. Yep. It's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. And uh, who's to say that it isn't, you know? If there's still cool looking fights like the one in episode 11 that you were describing and uh, all the characters are still, you know, they've got the, the catchphrases and the, the, like the introduct, the, uh, the appearances like in the nick of time, that's, uh, that can be entertaining. That's what, that's what anime is. It's that's for, what it's for your entertainment. That's what it's all about. After all, we are average nerds. We inspect mass entertainment. We inspected... And our inspection 
comes to an end. Our inspection has come to an end. We can close the, the file. Um, Case closed. Ace Attorney. Yeah. That, that was terrible anime, but a good game. Did you watch any of the Ace Attorney anime? No, you told me it was bad. Oh, it, so it was. Of, so I kind of assumed. And it, everyone else has said that it's it no good. It was trash. So. Um, but, um, you know, if people like that, then that's also cool. Anyway, uh, I hope you all enjoyed our little experiment. And I'm I'm out of here. You have any any final words you wanna wanna give, deliver to the people? Watch anime if you like it. Don't watch it if you don't. Hey, see ya, nerds. We did it. We got it in under an hour. Hell yeah, brother.